Good morning, everybody. We are getting ready for uh, Denver Guitar. Well, it doesn't matter if you're in Denver, wherever you're at. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to go post this on our website. Website is denverguitarorchestra.com. And um, we're doing daily lessons to get people up and running with fingerstyle guitar and a little bit of classical, a little bit of pop, a little bit of folk, a little guitar in lots of different ways, mainly finger picking. And uh, today we have. Uh, um, Drunken Sailor, which is not a typically a good song to finger pick. It's a good song to really knock out on your guitar. And so we'll be working on that today. Got the link posted. Let me go tweet our activities here today. Um, big Twitter user. Uh, the Denver Guitar Orchestra.com. <laughs> colon slash slash. Jolly Roger. Whoops. Roger. No, I'm in the Denver Guitar. That's the other site. Denver Guitar orchestra.com wait patiently okay and then we hit tweet that's a tweet and twitter has these provocative little ads uh it's always the second tweet down um it'll be like uh what's happening and then there's a tweet from somebody that i actually follow and then immediately after that there's one of these uh, clickbait ads it's like oh and there'll be some girl on there and uh, you're supposed to click on it. So <laughs> sometimes I do. Let's see. Um, all right. So Twitter is set. So I can close that down. And then uh, we're going to double check that the sound is good. Good morning, Sherry. Welcome in. You're first in. You win. <laughs> you get a gold medal today. And I have been rushing around our manage. We're having a management changeover here at my condominium. And so I'm having to do all of this crazy stuff every morning. So the first hour and a half of my day is uh, involves a whole lot of stuff that I don't want to do. And so, um, all right, let's see. All right, so let's see where we're at on this. Okay, so today we will be playing, what time is it? Oh, it's time to get started. So we're going to be playing Brother John first off. This is our third shot at this today. Uh, we'll play it one more time tomorrow, and then it's part of our Friday concert. So um, those of you guys who are new, this is your goal, right? Be able to play Brother John convincingly. And uh, those of you who've been around a while, play Brother John with some level of creativity. And so we'll be playing that first. Then the next song we'll be tackling is Drunken Sailor. Um, mostly I like that song to practice playing loud on the guitar and just getting yourself a little bit free. And then we talk uh, also about um, uh, a little music theory right off the bat on that one. And then finally, Danny Boy, one of these world-class songs that probably everybody ought to be able to, uh, if you walk into a coffee shop and they have one of those cheap old guitars sitting in the corner, you can go over and you can pick it up and uh, you can play Danny Boy. And uh, uh, that's one of those things that, you, that oh, all guitars ought to be able to do. I don't think I have it memorized anymore. Um, and there was a point I did, but not anymore. All right, so uh, let's see who else has showed up. Sherry's here today. Vic made it in, and he's writing up in Eugene, as always, in the winter, it seems like. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, Vic, Jerry, um, Jerry's number one, right? That means that she's the gold medalist for today. Um, you guys got to get your acts together, right? Elizabeth is here. Woohoo! It's getting woohoo! It's getting to be a great day in Georgia. Beignet. <laughs> okay. So if uh, if you are a Republican, not such a great day for Georgia. If, if you are a Democrat, very good day for you in Georgia. Uh, we don't know. I, I, at least as of this morning, they knew that one of the races was done. And they, I, they were still doing some counting on the other race, but it looked like it was also going Democrat. So uh, we don't talk politics here, of course, <laughs> because... Um, well, because we talk politics all 23 hours of the rest of the day. So here we talk about things like uh, um, how, to, how to cut your fingernails and uh, um, how to set up a three ring binder and how to um, have 
45 minutes a day where the, where the rest of the world magically vanishes. And that's what we're after every day here. Uh, so let's talk, Brother John. We, if, you were, if you did not attend Monday session or Tuesday session, you have a little catching up to do. And so just go to, into the archives on the website and look at Monday's session or Tuesday's session. Probably look at both, honestly, and that'll catch you up on Brother John, catch you up on the way we play fingerstyle guitar. And uh, Elizabeth says, moving on <laughs> in multiple ways, Elizabeth. And uh, so obviously, guys, one of the things that's important to me is you give me feedback on what's important to you. This is a very small group of players that meets here every day. And so while I have to be the one and post stuff on the website and, and get you moving forward, um, this needs to be meaningful for you as well. And so... Um, I know how to play all the songs in books one, two, and three, and I want you to be able to play all the songs in books one, two, and three, uh, and I want you to have all the skills to go with that. And in, and in order to do that, you don't be shy about asking for for, for things. Or uh, um, I am always slow on email. I finally took um, all of 2020's email and put them in a folder, and I says I'll get to those at some point. Um, and so I'm stuck in with 2021 email so far, and I'm already up to like a hundred. So um, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I feel this. I don't just delete your emails. I do read them, and uh, often if, if, there, if there's any way for me to respond to you, I do. Um, uh, but guys, right now in my personal life, guitar is where I'm putting most of my energy. Um, a lot into baritone ukulele, which is a, just a small guitar. Um, and so I'm really thinking a lot about EADGBE these days, and I want you guys to benefit from that. And so look, make sure you're communicative with me about what the things that you need. Um, you're putting in a lot of time and a lot of energy into this instrument. Um, this is not an easy instrument by any stretch of the imagination so anytime you're on youtube and you see the ad that says uh just sign up for our 1500 dollars course and guitar will be easy um that that's a lie and um and guitar will never be easy for anybody and uh, some people it comes to uh, comes to them more quickly than others but it is never going to be an easy instrument and so i want to make sure that you're getting the things that you need uh from me and sometimes that might be a song that you want to work on uh, mostly if you're in books one two and three i want you to get good at the songs in books one two and three every one of them is a legit uh has a legit meaning for being there and um um uh, and so there we go. Um, let's see who else wandered in this morning. Pauline made it in. Good morning. Evelyn is in. Another another day for Georgia. <laughs> I think we got a little little leaning democratically left leaning group here, but not necessarily, right? And uh, so so we I respect. I, 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 so we 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 stick our keep our brains on guitar. Should I try to get all three by Thursday evening or concentrate on one? Um. Thursday evening. Okay. Okay. I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> so the question comes up. We do have a Thursday evening class, um, which is designed for level four players. Now that doesn't mean it's only level four players though, right? The people who've been around a while and they're feeling like, yep, I get tough acts. I'm starting to work on my arpeggios. I'm feeling good about that. I want to play with somebody in a duet situation. Um, um, so at, on Thursday nights, and it's really for people who have jobs that can't come to the daytime classes. Uh, and, and for those of you who are really excited about this and really wanting to master a few world-class songs, that's what Thursday night is for. And my thought on Thursday nights is come with probably one of the songs really as solid as you can get it and then be willing to play the other two songs in whatever way you can so for example if i'm um level book one uh, i'm going to go to a thursday night class and i'm going to just play the melodies and see how i do then if i'm book two oh boy oh boy am i really really going to make sure that i can get my chord switches in at the times that I'm supposed to. So I might just be playing chords with, with, on Thursday night. Um, if I'm level three, I for sure am trying to dive into those tough act songs. And I do think uh, at level four, and to be perfectly honest, even at level three, my skills sort of reach this point where it's like, oh, I need to practice more on this stuff. Level four, there's no question that it's very hard music and I don't ever dumb that stuff down. Um, I try to make it as playable as possible, but a lot of times even that um, we've had in any number of songs where it, when I'm done at the end of the lesson I'm like ow that kind of hurt you know and so um, 
So yes, come to Thursday night if you can. Uh, come prepared with uh, probably focusing on one thing that you're going to work on, not necessarily one song. So if you're working on playing melody, have your melodies in great shape when you come there. If you're working level two and you're working on getting your chord changes in, really study those. If you're level three and you're working at tough acts, I would spend some time on that. Uh, and then, of course, if you're level four, your job is to see every way you can possibly add to the arrangement to make it as pretty as possible to really get to all of the nuts and bolts tied down onto that piece like that. So, yeah. So I would say uh, my attitude when I approach guitar is I want to get good at a small number of things. When I teach guitar, I want to throw a whole bunch of mud at the wall and see what sticks. And so it's a very different activity uh, teaching it versus playing it. Um, for you guys, you will do yourself a huge favor by really getting good at a smaller number of songs um, and then being willing to downgrade with the stuff you're working on. So let's say you're at, um, working in book three, you know how to play tough acts, um, and you get to level four songs and it's like, gosh, it's going to take me several weeks to get this song like this to together uh, maybe i'll get one of those songs together really tight and then the other ones i'm going to play the easier parts of them and so um or find the one songs uh the other thing i don't think we do enough of is find one song that you positively want to play uh, and you're willing to just practice that song every single day for the next two years that's the song that um you are going to own and so when i first started in ukulele my wife's favorite song is moon river and i said i am going to learn this song and i'm not kidding you guys i spent two years playing that song at least every day often many times during a day um and uh, now i own that song <laughs> right uh, uh they they call me up to get uh, royalty fees now because uh um uh, mancini you know he doesn't know how to play that song <laughs> uh, but um so be, be mindful that I'm going to keep throwing stuff at you all of the time, but your job is to find those things that are really meaningful to you and really work on those. And so that's a long answer, Nancy, but I do think it's sort of important to talk about. Um, she wrote Be Beatles songs and Good Morning. Yay, Georgia. <laughs> all right, you guys, stop it. <laughs> We're here for guitar. Um, you, you can talk about that stuff later. All right, here we go. Uh, Brother John, uh, first way I always like to play, I like to play, uh, since I know the melody, I, I will start off with chords. If I don't know the melody, I will start off with melody and make sure that that makes sense. But to, but because the real lesson here for level one players is, hey, I need to be able to pluck these notes out. So let's first do, do your chord. Remember, you're doing an index finger here, middle finger here, ring finger here. One, two, three, four. Frere Jacques Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sonnez les matines, sonnez les matines. Ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. Let's strum it. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. From a different. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, brother John? Brother John. Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding. One more time. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John? Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. Okay. So lots of different ways. All of what you notice, I'm just holding the cord, and then I'm doing different things with my right hand to make the song sound different each time, to give it a different texture. If I was getting it ready for performance, I would pick one of those ways probably, um, or maybe two. Uh, if you're gonna do a repeat, do it one way the first time and a different way the second time. Um, all of those are valid choices and it just depends on what you can do and what you like doing uh, to, to create a more interesting texture um, by strumming 
and that we call it strumming and singing for lack of a better mm. uh for a very imprecise term mm. there now for most of us uh singing is not the goal some of you are good singers and you should definitely be taking singing lessons and doing all of that stuff to get your voice to the best, highest level you want um i don't want to sing i have no interest in singing i've gotten a little better over the years but i'm still miserable because um my total amount of learning on singing is i read a couple books on how to sing <laughs> i think singing for dummies was one of the i i somebody was in the hospital and so I was going over and seeing them. I don't remember who that was. Maybe it was my mom. And uh, um, and so I go over there and just read Singing for Dummies every day. <laughs> read the whole book. Uh, didn't do any of the exercises. Didn't do any of the work I was supposed to do. But I did learn a little bit about singing. Um, and so uh, if you if you are a singer, try to get better at that. And then, uh, you know, but the, the guitar side of that is, hey, know your chords and be have a, a smart right hand attack and you're done with guitar lessons. Right. So uh, that, that's where you go with that. Now, if you don't, if you want to play guitar at all, or really play guitar, you have to be able to play the melody. And so let's do that next. That's your guitar melody line. Zero two four zero zero two four zero. Four five seven four five seven seven nine seven five four zero seven nine seven five four zero 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 zero. Everything's on the first string until the very until the last two measures. Let's play this twice through. One, two, three, four. Two four oh oh two four oh four five seven four five seven seven nine seven five. Second string, first string, first string, second string, first string, one more time. Oh, two, four, oh, oh, two, four, oh, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, seven, nine, seven, five, four, oh, seven, nine, seven, five, four. Oh, first string, second string, first string, first string, second string, first string. Okay. So again, newer players probably just playing the whole thing with your thumb on your right hand just to get, make sure, you know, to simplify things. Those of you been around a while, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. Okay. And then the books, the classical books encourage you then to do middle and ring. That's much harder. Okay. And then the next one, of course, is index and ring. Okay. So those are your three main practice techniques. Sometimes you start with your index and sometimes you'll start with the other one, right? Uh, you know, so, so play it through multiple ways. A song like this could actually do you a lot of good as those of you who are advancing into classical guitar um, to just, you got a tune, right? Who cares what the tune is? Um, but you're really practicing your right hand things. And I, if I do that, I'm going to take simple exercises. I'm not going to be trying to do that on Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm going to be trying to do it on something that's very sweet and, and easy so that I can really put my mind into what's going on in my right hand. Get that where it's just on, on autopilot and I'm getting better at it. I'm certainly a long way from good, uh, but uh, I want to get that on autopilot as much as possible. All right. So guys, if you, if you want to play tough acts, um, uh, this is not for new players. This is for those of you who've been around a while. Tough acts sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
read into first written ending instead of second ending. Okay. So eh, it happens. What are you going to do? All right. So there's Brother John. Uh, again, if you're newer and you weren't able to be set in on Monday or Tuesday's classes, I'd recommend you do that. Um, Brother John is the foundation. Every single thing on this piece of paper is important. There's nothing on here that you're not going to be using down the road. Um, every single note, every single widget, every single little googly goo on here means something and it is something you're going to use down the road. So make sure that you're really solid on Brother John um, uh, because it, it'll help you. It helps define every single thing else that we do in the program. All right, let's go on to page uh, book two. Uh, let's talk Drunken Sailor a little bit today. I think you are. Now, Drunken Sailor, we're going to play the melody real quick, but that's not the purpose of this tune. You're never going to play Drunken Sailor uh, with uh, this sensitive, ballad-like, melodic approach to guitar that we do on everything around here. This is when you're going to hammer out, okay? Uh, and uh, it's going to be fun, and you're going to get everybody together, and you're going to sing, and uh, you'll pass out page two of this, which has uh, 18, 19 verse <laughs> on here. And... Uh, uh, it could be a whole lot of fun to mess around with this tune with other people. And so uh, it's another one where if you know another guitarist or somebody else who plays any type of instrument, all uh, ukulele players know their A minors and Gs, and uh, piano players certainly do. Uh, and so you can get other types of players together and everybody just use the chords and have a great time. So let's tackle this in, in, in um, sort of reverse order, not reverse order, but a little bit different order. Let's do the melody first so you can see there's not a lot there. It's a super fun song, but there's not a lot in the melody. And so let's play through that first um, and not really very fast. Okay, probably just your thumb. If you're a newer player, this is something that you'll be doing a lot of. It's just pl plucking out melodies. And uh, um, let's play through it twice. Go down to the bottom of page, uh, obviously, page one, major 16, and then come right back to the top. One, two, three. Oh, 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 two, one, oh, three, 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 oh, oh, three, oh, 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 two, three, five, three, oh, three, oh, two, two, oh. Not too complex. Um, made one mis one one mistake along the way. Those happen, right? And then, uh, but more importantly, this is a song that's kind of fun to sing or just fun to just goof around with. And um, the one thing that you'll notice right off the bat, you're you're in A minor rather than a major key. So when it starts with an A minor, it's going to have this kind of a sad feeling to it. So for those of you who are newer, index finger on one, middle finger, uh, second fret, fourth string, and then your ring finger of three strings to um, second fret, ring finger. Okay. You can hit the top string, but you don't really want to, right? Because this is an A chord or an A string right here. And so it sounds great as the root for an A minor chord, right? So it's, what shall we do with the drunken sailor? Doesn't that sound great on your guitar? I mean, it's a really beautiful. I mean, it's a big guitarish type sound really love that um, 
uh, VIX is a measure for the D can be played on the open string. I know, I've got a G there, and I've got the D on the, on the um, sheet music joint. Oh, interesting. I don't think I have my um, melody lined up with the tablature there. I've got, a G, I've got it as G, B, D, G, B, D. typo Vic <laughs> um, let me the, I want you to play it the t I, I think it sounds better played the way the tablature is written so I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go figure out what happened there I probably you know the song like this I end up transposing it into a million different keys and all that so let me fix that tonight that's a that's a really good um, eye catching me I have a tendency to write out everything in the standard notation and then I start working on the tablature and sometimes I change the tablature and then forget to change the standard notation as well so um, uh, so let me look at that today that's a great question though the, the the standard notation and the tablature don't agree there and so let me go see what I did there that may be uh, hopefully that's the only place that happens maybe it probably happens somewhere else see I have it correct in measure 12 so measure 12 is what should be in measure four. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'll get that fixed today. Um, rats, this is my new bug too. Okay. Um, where were we at? Oh, we were just talking about how pretty A minor is. Okay. Now to get to G, you got to remove, we got to remove everything. Pull everything up. Index, lead with your index finger over here. Fifth, five strings up, index finger on in the second fret middle finger six strings up on the third fret and then in the chord shapes i'm giving you the fancy g which means you put your ring finger on the second string in the third fret and your pinky finger on the first string in the set third fret and if that's too hard in the beginning just use your ring finger down here on, on the first string or your pinky finger on the first string whatever you want if you put your pinky there you might as well get your ring finger there but this is the fancier G. It sounds a little bit nicer on most guitars. It's just got a little more oomph to it. Okay. And then, um, so, uh, boy, I'm just sitting there staring at that typo going, man, I'm really mad about that typo. All right, I got to get over it. Um, um, so, there you're at G. Okay. And then to get back to A minor, of course, lead with your index finger. So let's go through it a couple of times. Get your A minor to your G. So what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Her lion. Um, to um, uh, to goof around with, and um, um, 
Yeah, so there's your chords. Now, um, we would go through and play the tough acts, but you're probably not really going to do that on this song. It's just not that it's not it's it's not that it's not that kind of a song, right? What's more important is to go on to page two and let's talk about um, if you go uh, and, and we start transposing tunes. Uh, Carol says, "Is there a brand of guitar you pet food guitar?" food pedal, <laughs> foot pedal, uh, stool that you recommend. So um, um, what I carry in the studio is um, just these on stage um, pedal, um, foot pedals, foot foot stools. Um, and I don't, I just get them because they're in my supply chain and they've been very good. I mean, I don't have anything to positive or negative to say about them. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, the little, I don't know if you can see this, they have a little adjustable thing here so you can make it real tall. Some people like to put their legs way up top, way up high. Um, some people like it down a little bit lower. I have a tendency just sort of in the middle, either the second or third one um, to use that. Now, and that's what, um, that's definitely a place to start. Um, and that's what most classical guitar players were trained on prior to um, these ergo play things that have come out. Um, and so these are actually, they're going to make your life a whole lot easier because if you don't have one, you notice right now that your left calf is all tired because you're standing on your toes when you're playing and we don't that's not ideal so better to just put put the tat and put that under there and then your guitar will sit on your lap better um and so i have a tendency lately not to use that as much because i got this doodad it's called an ergo play um elizabeth got me i bought it years ago and i and i didn't write like it off right off the bat but elizabeth says no i want to i want to try it and see what i think and so she got one and then i thought well maybe if elizabeth is going to try it i'm going to try it too uh, i put it on this guitar i've been putting a lot more hours in on this instrument and so i thought you know let's let's see if it's going to work for me and i have come to like it i actually have after spending a great deal of time adjusting it and trying different things um this is something i would recommend if you're going to uh be playing uh, um, uh, classical or, or uh, um, finger style guitar where we, you know, you're sitting down most of the time and you're going through a lot of notes and a lot of sheet music. This is definitely, you see, it just sits in my lap quite pleasantly. And um, um, that's what we want. That way I'm not putting any energy into that. Um, <laughs> Carol says, can you put food on it? <laughs> well, as much as I use it now, I might as well use it as my lunch table. Um, the uh, but uh, so get, so you might want to get on the internet, read up on these. That's called Ergo Play, E G E R G O Play. Um, uh, my guitar teacher uses one with, and I don't remember the brand of it that actually has um, uh, magnets on here. So um, it seems like it's less likely to damage the finish of your guitar. Now I will be perfectly honest with you. I don't treat guitars as museum pieces, and if they get scratched, they get scratched. It's just part of what what I, what I, I don't worry about that on my personal guitars, mm -hmm. um, and so these suction cups may eventually create a little bit of a mar on the finish. I'm not going to lose my, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. Um, I, I'm here to play the instrument. And if it, the instrument gets abused a little bit, it gets abused a little bit. Um, but some of you may not like that idea of uh, attaching something to your guitar. Um, and if you don't, then obviously foot pedal is the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. um, and Elizabeth says she's been using hers and she likes it too. I think um, particularly if you're going to be practicing for more than 30 minutes, um, this system seems to make a lot of sense because both of your feet are flat on the floor and um, I notice if you you know to look at YouTube videos of the top good players lots and lots of them are using these things now and so uh, so yeah I just think it makes for a little less tension a little less work to hold your guitar where it's supposed to be um, uh, on the other hand if you have a guitar with a strap that works the same exact way <laughs> so all right, so we're getting a little off topic, but there, but uh, you got the um, uh, do does yeah, it comes off pretty easily. They're just suction cups. They're just suction cups, and you just pull it off. In fact, that's been my biggest problem since I don't put it in the case uh, on a day to day basis. Um, the, the things keep popping off <laughs> on their own, and so I'm like, what do I got to do? I'm gonna weld them on. Um, but yeah, they pop off, and then you can stick the guitar back in your case. I'm lucky because I have all room dedicated to what I'm doing here, and so I, the guitars don't necessarily end up in the case every day. Um, um, if you don't have a good room dedicated to your music, you want to put your guitar in its case every day because sooner or later the dog gets a hold of it and you get to go buy a new guitar, which is never bad. Right? 
Mm-hmm. All right. So Carol got us off topic. Let's get back to the topic. Drunken sailor. You guys know how I am. You get me off topic. It could be half an hour. Um, you, you've been using A. And then you'd be using G. Okay. Now, when we transpose a song, we have to keep the relationship between all of the chords the same. In this case, A. Wherever you put A on your finger, it doesn't matter in this case. A, what comes right before it is G. So you, whatever chord you're going to use uh, here, um, the chord, the other chord is going to be one down from it. So if I'm using A minor and G, if you look down at the bottom of page two, you'll see, oh, what if I use D minor, which looks like that. Then I just go down, down one, and so in, and that's going to be a C. That sounds cool too. Okay. So D to C. Now, what I want you to do is not look at your sheet music for a second. I want you to get. I want you to look at your hands. I want you to get D in. Get it figured out, and I want you to get C. And then I'm going to play. I want you to listen. Okay. You're going to know when it's time to switch chords. You're going to know because you're going to feel it coming up. And that's one of the cool things. That's the only thing I'm playing guitar. My dad taught me, right? He gave me a guitar as a little boy. He says, okay, you'll know when to change chords because you can feel it. And uh, you really can. Okay. Let me give you the example. One, play your D minor. Be ready to go to C and come back to D minor. One, two, ready, go. What shall we do with the drum? Sailor change, what shall we do with the drunken change? Sailor, what shall we do with the drunken sailor change? Erline change back the morn. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she rises. Hooray and up she Okay, so there's that. What happened there was my was when we got to the very bottom of the song, my it, the, the melody went above my voice's ability. So this would not be the two chords I would pick to do this song in typically because it went too high on me. Um, and if you like singing, you usually know what your low note is and your high note is, but you're not necessarily sure which key is going to fit your um voice best until you try a few and so um, in this case if I were to sing this for somebody A minor would be my first choice I would not sing it at D minor it just goes too high let's see what happens when we switch to E minor so if I've got E minor the note right before it is D and so you're going to go from E minor to D and back let's do that very quickly one two ready go what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Hooray and up she rises. 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 The other thing I want—I like to talk about on this song is when we are learning guitar, we play like this. And what I need you to do is play. Okay. We were afraid to make it. We're afraid to play it real loud when we were first starting because we might make mistakes and somebody might hear it. Um, so with Drunk and Sailor, one of the things you want to do when you when you're go close the door to wherever you're at and then just really pound it out, right? <laughs> right now you're reaching up to turn the speakers down on your 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 laptop well the idea here is we're super scared as new players to make a lot of noise and and the difference between us and electric guitar 18 year old boys who are on electric guitar is they're not afraid to make a lot of noise and so we want to be somewhere in the middle right we don't want to be afraid of making a lot of noise but we don't need to make that much noise and so um this is why uh, an acoustic guitar gives you this perfect opportunity to you know for certain songs it's more fun to really die dig into it a little bit make your talk yourself into playing loud once in a while to let that let the full voicing of the guitar come out uh, elizabeth added there are pieces of vinyl like material that come with the ergo play 
they can't they can go under the suction cups if you have french varnish oh okay so that so my ergo play is one of the early early uh, uh additions of it and so these days they may have come up with a little bit better um i would say be mindful of how you treat your guitar in based on its price and its replaceability if you have a 500 dollars guitar um, your guitar is very replaceable right uh, you might not want to but it's pretty replaceable and some of you are playing on guitars that are even cheaper than that um, this guitar eh, a couple thousand probably um, and i don't want i don't want to buy another two thousand dollar guitar anytime soon so i take pretty good care of it but i also know it if an airplane hits my house and this instrument gets blown up, I'm going to probably go buy a three thousand dollar guitar. <laughs> I might have to put it on payments uh, or pay, teach extra lessons or something, but it's not going to ruin my life. So um, that is so I, I treat I don't treat it like it's a museum piece. I treat it like a, an instrument. Now there is a, a, an other side of that. I do also own my dad's um, old Martin guitar, which I don't really ever play. It's just a type of guitar I don't like to play that much, um, and it it would be really sad to me if i lost that guitar not from its financial value but from its emotional value and so that type of guitar you treat much more carefully like i would never put the ergo play on that guitar right even though it's got plenty of scratches itself my dad took pretty good care of it but not perfect care of it um, but to me having that guitar is more important than playing it. so i think um, um with uh when you're thinking about your instrument be mindful to take good care of it. Don't abuse it, obviously, obviously, but also don't treat it like it's your, you know, it's Beethoven's piano in the in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, where you have to, you know, you have to be somebody, and they let you play it if you wear gloves, kind of thing. Um, and so, so, so we don't want to treat instruments that way either. Um, I did. I will mention down here, and it's not for everybody, but um, if you want to turn. Um, drunken sailor into a super fun thing you use the relationship of bar one and bar four so if i'm on bar on one i make my a minor shape in front of it chord. so now you're playing a b flat minor and that chord is going to match up with the major shape on bar four so you go up to four and put on your e shape and then you go can go back What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Her lie in the morning. Okay, now that's obviously for those of you guys who've been at this a little while. Um, but the nice part is once you know that the relationship is bar minor shape on bar one, major shape on bar four you can put that bar anywhere you want so if i decide oh i want the minor shape on bar three what shall we do with the drunken sailor now i'm just going to go up four and add up to which is now seven or eight yeah seven is it eight if i'm on three i have to add three one two three it's six sorry <laughs> and put the major shape okay so what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? So you see how that works. So that then all of a sudden you just you only need to know one chord shape and the relationship uh, uh, carries through to wherever you place the bar. Um, that again is definitely advanced uh, thinking. Um, and if we were electric guitarists, this would be day one material. Um, and if it's uh, if we're acoustic guitar players, it's definitely uh, a theoretical thing that we talk about separate from your levels. <laughs> so some of you will use that, some of you will never use that. All right, um, finally, oh, that's it for Drunken Sailor. Um, the, the, the purpose of Drunken Sailor is to really get you thinking about transposing songs, not so much about playing Drunken Sailor, except that I do want you to be uh, brave and play it kind of loud. Finally, let's run over to Danny Boy out of book three. Um, let's pull that one up. This was not originally, well, so it must have that over. Where do I have that? Oh, I think this is originally a book four song. That's why I don't have it in here. Was it, was it in book four? Is that what it was? I know I have it here somewhere, guys. Give me just a second. 
playing it the other day. Got too many pieces of sheet music these days. There it is. Okay, Danny Boy. Um, now, the nice part about this song, it comes at a perfect time if you are level two thinking of level three. This is a perfect song for that. Look at your chords. You've got an A chord right out of book one. You got a D chord right out of book one. And you have an E7. Now, in book one, we teach E. But to do the E7, you just raise your ring finger up. Okay? If you were a singer, a singer, this song is set up for you. The problem with this song, singing, is it gets really, really high. So let's sing through it one time. When I get to that high note, you know I'm going to miss it. Okay? Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling From glen to glen and down the mountainside The summer's gone and all the roses fall on me. It's you, it's you must go and I must mine. I'll bring you back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. Oh, I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you. So, and you would repeat the whole thing, right? So the chords are great. The chords are like, yes, we can finally play the song. Um, so if you're level two, for sure, this would be a, 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 a level three piece that you could easily knock out. And so give that some thought. Um, um, if you uh, have any um, Celtic heritage in you at all, you immediately start crying on this song. I don't know why. <laughs> um, it's really a good tune. Now, um, the other nice part about this tune is the melody is really beautiful on guitar. The problem with singing it is it gets that high note over there at measure 13. There's, you know, I got no hope of hitting that note at all. And so uh, what we want to do is use the guitar to hit that note. Okay, so let's play the melody. Turn this off, it's driving me crazy. One, two, or I'm sorry, it's a one beat count in. Okay, one. for fours. important here is position playing and I, I goofed it up a little bit but not too bad when you get to the bottom of when you get to measure eight you know you're going into the new idea in the song a new section in the song i'll probably when i redo this put in a double bar there because you got a new idea coming up um, if you are stick staying in level in first position you're going to end up with a trouble getting to five so what at the end of measure eight probably better to slide up into second position Oh, two, four, and then you can hit that five at the top of page two, clean. So I'm just staying in second position, right? Okay. Now I'm going to definitely have to change positions because I've got a nine coming up. So it's oh, 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 my 
highest note to nine, so I'm probably going to go with my pinky there. Okay, and give it a little wiggle. That's an important moment in the song. Here, that's what makes the girls cry. And then you hit um, middle finger on seven. And then probably reach down to your index to five, or you may at that point decide, hey, I'm going to jump my pinky. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm having a hard time getting my third string in. But so be mindful, you've got, really, you're going to be playing in three separate positions. First position to start the song off, second position, and then third position. All right, we're almost, we're, well, we're out of time. So let me, let's play through the tough uke one time so we, that we have a chance to just make sure you know that there's uh, nothing crazy in here. It's a beautiful piece of music. Okay, from the top, tough uke if you can, tough axe if you can. Uh, one, oh, just one beat counting. One. song it's really really pretty big challenges obviously um, when you get to page two you've got the bar on two with your pinky on five then, and you switch that out for this d chord <laughs> and pull it back to four so that's a little challenging there and then obviously major 13 you're going to bar nine put the c shape in front of it okay, if you can get that clean and let it just ride for a second and then do a bar back to seven and go grab your d The, probably the two moments in the song where you probably really have to put in some energy, possibly even memorize that notion of when you switch onto page two, boy, I gotta get that A chord on. Just memorize it that you're gonna do that. And then when you get to 13, you know, you got those three zeros leading into it, so you can drop that bar on there real conveniently and be ready for it. It's gorgeous if you can get it, okay? And um, a lot of times I will go ahead and uh, fret the fifth string because you get a weird kind of tone, a little bit more mysterious tone to it. So, all right. So there's your thing. Just a reminder. I'm um, on Friday. We're playing through everything. So so there's nothing off limits this week for you guys. Uh, we'll play Brother John. We'll play Dale, Colorado Trail, Down the Valley, Daisy Bell, Drunken Sailor, Danny Boy. Go Tell Aunt Rody is coming up tomorrow. One of my favorite songs of all time. I don't know why. And then Down by the Riverside will be our other tune for the week. Um, so be practicing those and, and, and messing around with those. Bring your questions to class, obviously, if you have things that are like, gosh, how do I do this or what should I do here? Um, and uh, obviously be in communication with me on email. Um, again, I am always behind on email, but I'm trying. And, um, um, you know, this is a small group. So let's make sure you guys know what you're what getting what you want out of this. 
And uh, um, thank you, Evelyn, for being here. Thanks, Vic. You're welcome. And uh, we'll just keep getting better. That's our plan, right? We just keep getting better. And if you want to participate in the Thursday night uh, class and you haven't got the sheet music already, you definitely need to talk to me in email. I'm not posting level four stuff on the website because it's all copyright stuff. So um, so um, send me an email and I'll get you the sheet music for Thursday nights. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon, morning evening whatever time it is where you are and um harmonica is next if you want to come play harmonica it's a hoot and then not too hard and uh, kind of just a, one more weird thing to do and then uh, ukulele after that so um thanks pauline good to see you sherry good to see you keep showing up we're gonna make you great players or we'll make you better players i don't know if we'll make you great i don't know hopefully <laughs> have a great day you guys <laughs>